Good morning and uh, welcome to Race Industry Now, the weekly webinar series from ePart Trade, presented to you by ARP, Performance Plus Global Logistics, Scott Lewis and Associates, PIC, Shop Monkey, and Fifth Third Bank Motorsports. I am Francisque Savinia, the founder and CEO of ePart Trade, the global platform for the performance and racing industry. This is episode 356, and we're going to be hosting Gator Tours this morning. With me are Judy Kim, the co-founder of ePart Trade, and our wonderful host, Mr. Brad Dilly. Judy? Thank you, Francisque, and thank you everybody for joining us today. This is the first we have a hand tool on today which we're excited about because they are really coming in strong into the U.S., expanding their footprint in the industry, and they are hooked up with Scott Lewis Associates, which is one of the best manufacturer rep companies in the industry. So excited to hear what's going to be said today and learn more. Brad? Yeah, I am too. And uh, thank you very much, Francis. Thank you very much, Judy. Uh, this is going to be fantastic because when it comes to this topic, I'm sort of a geek for tools. And uh, I'm also one that uh, has a tendency to lose mine. So something what they have, uh, especially in the way they look, makes this a whole lot easier. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll see you two uh, here very shortly. But our topic today, High Precision Tools for the Performance and Racing Industry by Gator, uh, by Gador Tools with Troy Robshaw, the National <laughs> Sales Manager. And um, what we're going to introduce you to today is a company that's been around for more than a century. And when we start talking about tools and hand tools, I would actually refer to these as the Rolls Royce of tools. And uh, it's a really special product and one I think you're going to like to learn a lot more about today. I do want to remind you, as always, if you have a question uh, for our panelists here today and the topic that we're talking about, feel free to type it into the chat box and we'll get as many questions as we can. But with that, we'll go ahead and get started. And Troy, I want to welcome you here today. We really appreciate Gador Tools being a part of race industry now and everything that we've got going on. How are you? Good. How are you today? Thanks. Doing fantastic. So, um, you know, I, I can give a very basic background of uh, what Gador Tools is, but I know you can be a little more elaborate with that. So tell us what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to go over our specific product line of torque products, um, and we're not going to get into every little detail because it gets pretty involved, but we're going to kind of take a top level look at what we offer in the torque range of products. Uh, that is wonderful. Well, uh, I mentioned a brief history of the company over 100 years, and uh, and this is a product made in Germany, but obviously you guys are starting to really grow here in the United States. How's that been going? Uh, it's pretty good. We've had, you know, obviously, as you said, we've been around 100 years. Um, we've had presence here, but we haven't put a lot of emphasis in the North American market. Uh, we're really, really strong in the EU, predominantly because we're manufactured in Germany and the UK. We do have five factories, but uh, so the emphasis began last year to just further expand into different market channels. Yeah, and, and I do want to point out here early on that when it comes to distribution in the United States, um, you guys are really making some pretty good inroads. So especially for people who are looking for new tools, maybe looking for some innovative, more quality products as well, um, fear not, because the United States is uh, fairly well covered by Ghidorah as well. Yeah, we like to think so. And obviously, there's always room for improvement, no matter um, the uh, the company, but we have all the national distributors, the industrial guys from Granger, MSC, and all that. Um, we have a warehouse here. Um, we carry about seven thousand different SKUs. Um, we manufacture about sixteen thousand. So uh, we, Im, you know, import and bring more in as needed. But uh, yeah, it's widely available. That's wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and really uh, dive into this. And I know uh, that along the way, you might have some videos and some PowerPoints and everything else, uh, Troy. So if you want to go ahead and start with that, talking about Torque products. I'm going to start right now. And All right. So as we can, as we know, um, Torque is, is pretty common in every shop and facility out there. I think it's oftentimes overlooked in terms of uh, how precision torque really should be and can be. And a lot of people just purchase a torque wrench from you know ABC company and call it good. There's a lot of things involved in torque that um, the specialist companies like us can help better improve. And I'm gonna give a little background about Ghidorah and then some of the tools that we offer and the devices that we can provide to help manage torque better in any facility that's out there. 
as I mentioned before, we're about 100 years old, 16,000 products. We're still uh, family owned. And uh, we've invented a couple different products over the years, probably more than a couple, but one of them that uh, is pertinent to this conversation is the uh, slipping technology that we offer. Um, it's probably not well known in this category, but we're going to um, fix that today. <laughs> Um, I'm going to show a brief video here that just highlights how we categorize three common uh, different types of torque wrenches. This is just a couple moments long, but I think it's helpful. What we just witnessed there is pretty much everybody's going to be familiar with just a click style wrench. Five degrees between each click, click, click. Quite easy to over tighten them. Uh, a lot of people hit that first click and think, well, I'll just be safe. I'll hit a second or third click. So there are two other versions of wrenches that are actually quite common out there in the industry. One was the, you saw it called the breaking or breaker. That trips. 20 degrees before it can click again. So the user or the operator has to really want to over tighten the application. And then there's the last one that is shown here. It's called the slipper uh, cam over. We invented that a number of years ago and uh, it's impossible to over torque. And I'll, we'll get into that in a moment. Um, again, I just went through this. The, there's another for so the slipping here is impossible over tighten, breaking, as we just mentioned, the click style, which pretty much anybody that has a torque wrench will know about this style. And then there's the old standby that is kind of used for quality. That's the dial. We produce a lot of those, but you see the industry is turning into more of a um, digital format. So, uh, and we have a wide variety of high end digital torque wrenches for quality control for verification. In this, and I'll get a little bit deeper into it, in the non-adjustable uh, slipping wrench, these will have to be preset by the factory and certified. So if you have a common torque setting that you find or some critical joints, um, the slipping is an ideal application or tool for that application because it's impossible. There's, you just, once you hit that torque setting, it just keeps turning around. And the same thing with the adjustable in the slip style. The difference in the adjustable versus the two is the adjustable, the operator or the user can modify it. And now you are not 100% sure that that critical connection has been achieved to the uh, right torque. But there's a lot of uh, uses for the adjustable. And then the um, our 20 degree braking, there's a handful of other manufacturers that do this. This is a fairly common out there. And you see it doesn't have a head on here. You can put any style of wrench head, socket head, anything you want on there, and they come available in adjustable or, again, preset. And if we preset them at the factory, they have a certification that's good for one year. We'll get into that in just a little bit into some more detail. A very large category for us is uh, screwdrivers, uh, torque screwdrivers. And there's only a handful of larger manufacturers in the precision category, and especially when you break it down even further into precision torque. And it's predominantly three styles. There's just the standard, uh, for us anyway, standard preset uh, slipper. Again, when it reaches that torque, it just keeps slipping. By the way, every one of our torque screwdrivers is a slipper, but they're adjustable or they're preset. There's a lot of applications out there that are surprisingly ideal for the screwdriver, the torque screwdrivers, whereas people are just knowing that maybe they need a certain Newton meter setting and they're just kind of guessing. Uh, these will be more effective for those uh, connections. This series is just an uh, adaptation of this, um, the QS slash Ergo series. They are adjustable and a little bit more comfortable to use. And if we have operators or facilities using uh, the need to have more and more uh, uses, the Ergonomic Pro Series is just meant for heavy daily use, we'll call it. 
There's a short video here. Well, it's actually a little bit longer than short. I think five or six minute video. In this video, we will look at the quick set range of calibrated scale torque screwdrivers. The quick set is designed with ease of adjustment in mind. This set is ideal for use in servicing and maintenance environments. The micrometer style scale allows for precision setting of the torque and slip free mechanism eliminates over tightening. Click through to explore the full range of Godot products. A wide range of models are available covering all ranges from 0.2 to 9 newton meters with equivalent imperial scale versions up to 80 pound force inch. Each screwdriver is supplied with its own certificate of calibration. Adjustment of the torque takes only a few seconds by pressing down the locking knob on the front of the scale and then rotating the handle until the required torque is achieved. Click through and register your Godot product. Each tool comes with, as standard, a quarter hex drive and a quarter hex to quarter male square adapter. This allows for use with standard nut sockets and also standard hex drive bits can be purchased. The anodized aluminium handle and stainless steel shaft provide a robust tool for long-term industrial use. On low torque applications, the risk of over tightening is reduced due to the slip free mechanism. The quick set screwdriver eliminates the over tightening of applications due to the slip free mechanism which works at the set torque, making it impossible for the operator to apply more than the chosen value. Within the tool, there are six features which minimize the operator fatigue during operation. On larger torque applications, with the larger tools, T-bars are supplied and these clip into the back of the tool. After use, the torque should be reduced to the lowest value on the scale to prolong the life of the tool. Explore the full range of Godot products on www.godot.com. So just a quick comment on that video, you'll notice the, uh, the British accent. That is uh, where we produce about 80% of our torque products and the other 20% are at our home office factory in Remscheid. Germany, which is just in the Black Forest area. We are, a, a large portion of torque is oftentimes overlooked in terms of in-facility data checking or collection. And we're, we're one of the larger producers of the ways that somebody can check and verify your torque on your wrenches in-house. So by that, I mean, most people just say, well, I think it's out of torque. I'm going to send it in a year, 18 months, however old it is. And you don't really have a track record of it. It's not well organized and managed. We have taken that so the operators, the owners, they can control their certification validation process a lot easier and maintain it in-house. One of the ways we've done it is a more modern way is this what we call the capture light. This mounts to the bench. The operator takes and just puts their torque wrench up to it, tests it, and verifies before or maybe before the use of that one time or you know once a week just to verify that it is still within specification. Problem with torque wrenches is if they're dropped, nobody mentions it, it could be out of torque or out of range by five additional percent. So they're going to come to the purchaser plus or minus three percent or 4% accuracy, and now we dropped it, and it might be now 10, 12% out, and on those critical connections, that is that is uh, very unacceptable. A quick way to uh, correct that is this bench tester unit, verify your torque once in a while. Yes, you know it's in spec, you're good to go. That is, there's a little video that's gonna go into more detail over here might take a second to start.
So what we just saw there is the operator was, you can trace, track, or just look at peak torque and those settings, and that's, those are pretty common ways to test your wrench. He happened to be testing with a torque screwdriver, but it, it we go up to 3,000 foot pounds. So it's it covers the entire range of most of your torquing needs. We can go higher than that, but not with this exact product. It, it, it can be fed back to a PC for tracking, or the newest thing that we allow um, use for is we now have a, what we call the capture nav. It connects to the uh, bench tester, that capture light that was there. And we put an uh, NFC tag on it, basically the same thing as an RFID tag, but the NFC is a two-way reading. You just stick that little tag to your tool and for the future of the operation of that tool, you can now track everything by scanning that NFC tag to this uh, capture light. It's very simple to use. I'll get into a, a little bit more detail of how that works, but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna track now going forward on this tag electronically, the tool, the serial number, who the operator is if you want, or the workstation, um, the torque specs that you have set for that tool. What's it supposed to be operating within? And we can go also with the date in service and the date last um, service. And it's obviously, it's portable. Uh, it's, it's real simple to operate. It's a go, no go. Uh, again, uh, holds 99 presets, but it can be also all downloaded for uh, continuous recording of that in a PC. That's incredible. That really is a neat resource to have right there in the shop. Yeah, that to us from what we've seen so far in like we've had a couple of the um, airline manufacturers jump on that right away because they were having a hard time keeping their arms around, you know, anywhere from doesn't matter if it's five or 5,000 torque wrenches in the facility. It's trying to organize all that and manage it. When was it last certified? Who's using it? When was the last at least? So certified, when I say that, I mean sending it out to a laboratory, but when was it at least last checked? And again, we don't want to go too far down the road before we find out that this thing's um, out of spec. So that helps in that quite a bit. We've seen a lot of positive feedback and I'll play the operation this here now. Make sure the capture nav is connected to the capture light and connected to power. Scan the RFID tag on the tool you want to check. The capture nav will show green lights and the tick marks for a tool with intolerance. If the incorrect tool is chosen, or if the tool is outside the tolerance limits, red lights and crosses will be shown. So it's that simple. Uh, with one exception, we are going to want to load an app onto your, your iPhone or your Android. You're going to load on with that app. You're going to scan the NFC code. And once you scan that, now you can write in there the critical data that you find important for your facility or your application. And then going forward, all you'll do is take your phone and scan that to check that wrench. Um, and when was the last time it was verified in your operation. And as we probably know, I think um, the NFC tags come in, it's not necessarily specific to us. You can buy any size, any type of NFC tag. So they're, and they're very, very expensive. We find them for, I don't know, 25 to 75 cents, somewhere in there. So it's a pretty low cost. The threshold to get into the technology there's a little bit of a cost up front, but after that, it's pretty low cost to expand it to pretty much every wrench in your facility. There's uh, one couple last little talking points that I wanted to touch base on. And these are some basic questions that we oftentimes run across. Um, you heard me talking about what happens if we drop a tool. Well, we now don't know. I mean, if it's dropped maybe a foot or two, that's one thing. But if it gets hit, uh, gets in any way up against something hard, um, doesn't matter whose tool it is, ours or anybody other competitors, it needs to be certified or verified. It doesn't have to necessarily go up for recertification, but it needs to be checked. And I think, unfortunately, all too often operators 
aren't aware that if they drop a tool, it is now potentially um, something that needs to be verified. Um, we, for manual, uh, these types of tools, we request, and it's pretty industry standard uh, to test them or certify them, I'm sorry, certify them every 12 months or what they call 5,000 pulls. So every 5,000 uses. Now, uh, a lot of places use their torque wrenches just intermittently and they think, well, 5,000, that's gonna take me five years to cover that range. No, because now we have that time factor. It's once a year or if it's a heavy application like 5,000 pulls. Electronic torque wrenches, a little bit further out, every 26 months, regardless of the poles. And yes, again, they uh, they need they come from us pre-certified. One of the things that we would ask anybody to check for when they're looking at our competitors is to make sure that they come pre-certified with the certification in the uh, packaging. If not, there's a questionable um, issue there that needs to be resolved why they're not pre-certified. We use the an industry standard. There are a handful of uh, standards that we certify under. The most common one is a, a six, seven, eight, nine, two, seventeen. But uh, most of them are again. There's two or three that are most common. Um, we use a couple of preferred providers that work with us here in North America for certification services. But quite frankly, if you have somebody that you're working with, anybody is capable of certifying any branded tool. It's repair and maintenance that, that kind of throws a little bit of a wrench into it. And uh, before you would want to maybe think about rebuilding a tool, it's going to be between four and five years or what we call about 20,000 pulls or 20,000 uses. Now they're going to want to take that tool completely apart wipe all the old lubricant and oil out of it, look for anything that is showing any kind of wear, and they're for sure gonna replace, if it's a spring in there, they're gonna sure wanna replace that. It's a pretty low cost, but on average, about 50% of your purchase price of the tool is gonna be what it's gonna cost you to completely rebuild it. So if it's a good quality tool, uh, especially like ours, I like to say, you can completely rebuild the tool for half the price and get another four or five years out of it. So yes, we're a little bit more on the pricey side than some of the competitors out there, but this could be a tool that you'll never have to replace as long as you maintain it and rebuild it. Um, we, to maintain an accuracy and uh, there's uh, the, you mentioned, you saw mentioned before is I think a lot of people forget this or are even aware of it. When you're using a tool, you want to release the, so if you said it, it's, it's from 10 to 100 foot pound tool. At the end of the day or at the end of that application, you want to release that torque setting back to zero. You're taking the pressure off the internal mechanisms. And by doing that, you're going to uh, lengthen the ability for that tool to be within spec, not have to be recertified. Because if you keep it under tension, it may take less than 5,000 pulls or um, even less than 12 months to have that tool on a specification. Doesn't matter if it's our tool or any other tool out there, this is just a common trait of a torque wrench and it oftentimes is forgotten. And uh, anybody that's gonna be at SEMA, I wanted to add in there, stop by, visit us. We'll have uh, all of our, maybe not every one of them, because we have so many different uh, uh, versions, but we'll have a variety of these tools on display there. So for that, I'll turn the more back over to you and hopefully I covered at least a good thumbnail sketch of uh, of things for you guys. And I, I think that was really an incredible presentation, Troy. I truly do. Um, and I want to remind anyone viewing right now, uh, live here, uh, if you have a question, feel free to type it into the chat. We'll answer anything. Um, so many of the things that you talked about, I, I, I've always said it. Look, I think uh, not only should every mechanics and maintenance shop have a, a full set of torque wrenches, but they should also be taught how to properly use them. I love the fact that with the slipper technology, um, it, it, I, I'll, I'll say it in simple terms, you've almost dummy proofed it. Um, I just think that is phenomenal, uh, everything that you have, and uh, and obviously the way to check it as well. Uh, the screwdrivers, um, that 
really fascinates me, especially with the slipper technology. And, you know, I think of my own needs. And for me, it's usually motorcycle maintenance, the amount of actual fasteners that don't really need to be torqued too much that I've seen plenty of people snap along the way. But I also think about the precision for, you know, people who are building engines, people who are doing things that absolutely need that day in and day out with what they're doing and uh, and the technology that you provide. Uh, you know, as you start to introduce some of these tools here in North America and start to see people who have been using a lot of the other name brand products, which are obviously great as well, uh, what is some of the feedback that you're getting from people when they put your tools in their hands? Well, one of the first things you might hear, depending on the type of customer it is, um, type of user, is the price. You know, but you get, there's there's basically three segments of the torque industry price. There's the really low cost that you're going to buy at an unnamed distributor that's out there. Uh, we don't even refer to those types because we're, we don't trust any of those torque tools. There's the middle of the range that are a pretty good torque tool, relatively trustworthy, and they're good for, you know, for Johnny Q public shade tree kind of workout back. Then there's the upper tier, and that, that narrows the field down to about five or six uh, major manufacturers. We're one of them, but amongst our peers, we're very um, uh, average in terms of price. So that, that can be a little bit of a barrier at first, but what you're getting uh, in terms of quality, longevity, and the support. We like to make sure that people know torque, understand torque, at least in our field, and uh, help them in any way, shape, or form, even if they want to continue with their own brand that they're using will help them uh, do a better job at certifying, verifying, and manta maintaining and managing their torque tools in their shop. So we, we'll work on both ends of it. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Look, I, I think a lot of people who, um, who are here viewing uh, definitely understand that it's the right tool for the job uh not right. necessarily one that's the lowest cost and and you know uh, you're going to pay for it somewhere you might as well pay for it with accuracy precision and a quality product than pay for it by redoing jobs uh over and over having things go wrong so that's always been my philosophy when you start talking about recertifying rebuilding and all of that what what would you say would be the typical downtime for someone once they send a tool in so, uh most of the time it's, there's a 24 hour turnaround. So uh, when it gets in the facility, 24 hours, it's back out. So it's just that ship time. Um, we see a lot of our larger users, they'll have a spare one that they can fall back on. And then that, that one that uh, they're sending out probably day and a half, two days to get it to the facility that, so, and, and the facility actually will ship the shipping boxes to them. So they don't have to worry about putting it in, like what kind of packaging, because we know that all too often it gets unboxed and then the box gets thrown away. Well, that's expected. We will supply the box for them to ship it in to certify it, have it back in three, five days max on average. Wow, that that's really good. You know, you talk about some of the fixed setting tools um, and then some of the adjustable setting tools. And I would think, obviously, if someone has a need for a fixed setting because of the repeatability, that would be a huge convenience. Is there any difference in the longevity of the tool, you know, accuracy or anything like that between say a fixed torque setting and one that's adjustable? Yes, uh, but very little, but that's a good question is the, the preset or the fixed setting, we can get the accuracy down to less than 3% plus or minus 3%. Uh, your click style, um, the, and I, I should say adjustable, on, we are also 3% on average. The industry standard is 4 to 5%. So we run by that 3% rule, but when we get into the real minor uh, precision torque, at like 0.5 Newton meters, that's where it starts becoming difficult to maintain that 3% or lower accuracy. And then we're running about 6% max. So still at 0.5 Newton meters, which I don't think there's probably too many applications that we'll run across, but we, run across them out there, 6% um, is allowable. 10% on a fastener is usually what's allowable. Most fastener manufacturers allow plus or minus 10% on their torque specs. 
Yeah, well, the the fact that uh, you guys are so much tighter uh, is pretty incredible. You know, Troy, looking around the website, too, and as we were talking uh, last week as well, just the impressive line of products that you have. And I know you talked about a couple of specific things, but while we're even more specific on torque, some of the other things you have that, you know, I know are certainly used in the racing industry quite a bit, uh, torque multipliers and a lot of other different things as well. Can you talk about that a little bit? So over the course of 100 years, uh, Ghidorah started out with some of the most basic tools that they're out there from what we call spanners in the, in the industry, but, you know, uh, wrenches, sockets and all that. And then we branched out into some of the most, basically, if you can think of a tool, but you can't find where to get it out of 16,000 SKUs, we're going to have it. Uh, there's only like one other company that has this, not even as large a range as us, but in terms of hand tools. Everything from insulated tools, we're one of the largest VDE or insulated tool manufacturers in the world. Uh, even the we have cordless operated battery torque tools that will go up to 54,000 foot pounds. Probably not too many applications in this sector for that, but you'd be surprised how many we actually sell globally. There's a lot of high torque fasteners out there. So again, just standard screwdrivers, adjustable tools, um, I can't even comprehend of where to begin with the range. But again, if it's a tool, you want to put it in your toolbox, we'll have it for you. Mm -hmm. The other thing I really like about what Ghidorah is doing and the way you guys are designing your tools is obviously we talked about the technology and, and what a great presentation talking about uh, the different things that you have to offer, including the slipping technology. Um, the look and design of them is fantastic, but what I'm also most interested in is the ergonomics of it. Not only is it going to be comfortable in my hand, uh, but am I actually going to be able to get a good enough grip on it to do everything that I do? Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, it's not just about what's inside the tool, but it's also about what's outside the tool as well. And it looks like Adore has been very thorough with that. Yeah, we, we believe in uh, fit and finish. So... Basically, it's that initial perception. We want a, a good quality uh, finish to the steel. We want a good, comfortable handle. Uh, everything, our packaging may not be iPhone style, fancy packaging, but that's not where it's at once it's out of package. What we care about is the product itself. And we cared about that since you know 1919. And that's why we continue to grow today. And we constant, we actually just released a new torque wrench here about a month ago that will be um, coming into North America. So we're constantly trying to upgrade and update and renew. And if we get positive or negative feedback, we take that and utilize that and pretty quickly turn around and make adjustments to our tools that we're manufacturing. No, that's great. Uh, you know, another one of the features too, um, as far as uh, this goes, clockwise and uh, anti-clockwise torque as well. Look, not, not every fastener is a right-hand thread, right? This is true. Uh, some of our tools, like the uh, torque screwdriver, they're only one way. Um, but we have a, a large range, to your point, that uh, operate in either direction. That can be used for breakaway torque settings and so forth. So um, I'd say probably 25% of the torque needs out there want them clockwise and counterclockwise, whereas uh, most of them are just tightening. And we need to make sure that we're using that tool in the proper setting. So if it is a tool that you purchase and you're trying to use it to also release and then retighten, if that's a one-way torque wrench, you've potentially just done some damage to that you may not be aware of. Yeah, that that's really good to know. When it comes to the uh the measurement tool, the bench tool that you were showing us, um uh Again, I think that's a really neat thing. You know, you talk about certifying the torque wrenches and making sure everything is within spec. Is that also something that after a certain amount of time you need to send back, you need to have recertified, you need to have rebuilt? It, it is. And that's every, on average, two to three years, unless it's been abused. Um, we can usually, well, I haven't really had any that I've recognized as being abused. I've been in some pretty rigorous environments. By that, I mean exceeding its settings. So if somebody buys a test uh, bench tester that goes up to you know, a range from 100 to 400 foot pounds, but they, they test it to 500, now they've exceeded that, um, uh, that unit's capacity. For the most part, it's again, it's a five day turnaround to test that uh, or to verify that. So um, we can get it in, we'll check it real quick. Uh, if it needs repair, it's usually pretty quick. The components to replace them in, in uh, 
uh, refurbish that in any way, shape, or form can be uh, done fairly quickly if they're in house. If they're not, we can get them in from our factory in Germany in one to two days. So our turnaround is pretty good. No, oh, that, that's incredible. All right. So I, I think about the bench tester, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, in shops might be thinking the same way. Look, I've been using my tool a lot. I've probably gone, you know, below my 5,000 poles or with the 12 months, whatever it is, but I've got this bench tester. So I know, or at least I think I know what my margin of error with this tool is. So maybe that's just going to extend when uh, I actually have to step away out of the shop and, and start taking care of some of those things. Is that okay to do that? And if not, why not? Really, at the end of the day, we it, it's going to be dependent on those torque or the yeah you know, the torque needs and or the applications. So we're offering the bench tester to a user that is needing to at least once a week or even once a day is uh, the two ways that they'll take and test those tools, verify that they're at the hundred you know for example hundred foot pound setting, check it, and they can go do their work. Uh, especially to a new user. You get a new user that, that they, they're not quite comfortable with making those adjustments or settings and they could be actually tightening, to, tightening down to 105 and then going that one extra click. So now you've just crunched that down and you stretch that fast down beyond the proper tension. So um, you can move the unit from shop to shop or facility to facility, it doesn't matter. Um, again, it's, uh, it's pretty uniform to anybody's needs. Yeah, it, that's really neat. The warranty on the product as well. That's always very important for a lot of people. What is the warranty that Cador offers? We're uh, two years on all of the torque tools and uh, lifetime on everything else. Uh, torque is just one of those. There's too many parts in there that uh, are just, they're going to wear out with use. Uh, but if it's a, a factory issue, something that we made uh, that was uh, incorrect, We'll take care of it for at least the two years. If it's beyond that and it looks like it's in pretty good shape, most of the time we go ahead and warranty that and take care of it. When I say it looks like in pretty good shape, you'd be surprised how many torque wrenches we get back. It looks like they were drove, you know, or pulled down the road behind a pickup truck for 100 miles and there's like, warranty us, please. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's understandable. And I also want to circle back to, uh, again, when you start talking about getting toward the part of this where it's not that you really need it recertified, but you actually need the tool rebuilt. What a huge cost benefit um, uh, to a shop to be able to do that. And effectively, I mean, when this tool comes back rebuilt, as far as the internals and everything goes, uh, you know, once again, you're almost working with a new tool, right? You are. You basically you you have essentially a new tool now that it, you're just going to go. You're going to put it back into this uh, to the program. You're going to recertify it once a year, and in another four or five years, you're going to rebuild it. So in theory, you can continue with that tool for a lifetime. You, it just your, your ROI. At what point do you want to just go ahead and scrap that tool? But what we suggest to people is at least rebuild it once if it's rebuildable. Again, it's uh, comes down to how abusive people have been on that tool. Can it be rebuilt? But more often than not, it can be completely rebuilt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you were showing with the, uh, with the chips and being able to recognize the tool when you're testing it and all of that. But each one of these tools as well comes with its own unique serial number. Can you tell us about the benefits yeah. there? Everyone is, uh, again, it's, own, it's serialized. And then all of the, uh, the paperwork that will arrive with that is from a certified lab and that paperwork uh, identifies that tool that it was certified that day by that operator, by that person. And we're, we're conforming to the proper standards, which we have to have an environment with a certain humidity level, certain temperature that we're working within. Uh, there's a handful of really well-known labs in North America that can perform the same work. So we don't have to send it back to one of our two factories to do that. And that's why we partner with a couple of them to work on that. No, that's fantastic. And again, you know, Godor really expanding into North America, a hundred year old company. Uh, you know, we refer to it as the Rolls Royce of tools, which is a great thing. When you showed the slide with the distribution that you have right now, people like Granger, people like Fastenal. I mean, this is something that's widely available from companies um, that are very well known and very well trusted here in the United States as well. Yeah, we we've done. Obviously, we're in the national industrial distribution side of it, but there's a lot of regional and semi, you know, uh, even more local industrial type distributors. So if you have somebody that you uh, would rather use locally, 
just let them know what the product is. Um, we can quickly work with them to get the product through them. So you don't, we're not forcing somebody, we're just making it, as you said, widely available, but people have a preferred local vendor that they want to work with. We're more than happy to work with them as well. Yeah, it, well, hey, look, if I was interested in carrying uh, the Ghidorah tool line, how does that process work? Uh, it's For us, it's a pretty basic uh, credit app. We only sell through distribution. We do not sell direct. So we're just going to need a resale certificate and uh, uh, get you set up as a distributor, and, and uh, we're on our way. Yeah, th this is fun. I, 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 You know, the one thing I love about what we're doing here on Race Industry Now uh, is uh, introducing people to a lot of great new products and like what you have uh, with Ghidorah. I do want to uh, read a comment from the chat as well. Troy, very interesting presentation. You mentioned the VDE insulated tools and Ghidorah being one of the largest producers. Can you tell us what the outlook for these products are for the burgeoning EV market and the shops that service EVs? That's a great question. It is. And uh, I will say that for us, we see this as a growing category. It's it's a it's a must because to work in or service anything in the in, in the um, uh, the the EV industry, uh, you have to have certified tools. Uh, the certification process. There's three different versions of certifications. One is a very old uh, certification that is still acknowledged in North America, but it's unfortunately. Uh, it derived in 1976, so it's a little bit outdated, but the, the other two, VDE being the predominant one amongst our peers, um, they have to be certified to withstand three seconds or, uh, yes, yeah, three seconds at 10,000 volts, but operational at 1,000 volts, and they're two layered. That's why you'll see the red and then the yellow underneath there. That first layer, if it gets torn or cut open just a little bit, it, that tool is now ineffective it should be thrown away but that's your that's the way to guarantee that that tool is um, a working tool for the uh, visual purpose of the operator all tools have to be um, set in water for 24 hours and then tested electronically to that 10,000 volts and 1,000 volts um, we have to have that lab in-house to, to be certifying it as VDE so then we're certified so those tools come out of the box ready to go ready to be used not only uh, EV, but in uh, any kind of industry that's that's operating in that higher voltage range. And um, we produce, I think, four different current kits. Everything's available individually. And then we have like a starter toolbox. We have a little bit intermediate all the way up, which we'll have in their booth at SEMA to the most advanced toolbox, basically, that's out there. It doesn't include every single VDE tool, but it's if you want to set up a, a facility a bay that's going to work on VDE. You buy this toolbox, it's outfitted, you're up and running immediately. Wow, that's great. And, and look, as technology continues to change, um, uh, you know, what a great resource to have and, and really to be pretty far ahead of the game on something like that as well. Because uh, look, if you just go out there on the road, you're starting to see more and more EVs out there and uh, being able to service them and all of that. Well, Troy, this has truly been incredible and, and really love the presentation and the introduction of Ghidorah here as well. Is there any final thoughts that you might want to add? No, we just, uh, we're, we're wide open for any questions, comments, um, <clears throat> thoughts. Uh, you can, obviously, the email address is info at, I get, I view that every day. Um, doesn't mean that I answer immediately, but uh, we're welcome to uh, to talk to you. If you want a sample, uh, we can work with you on that in certain cases. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we look forward to talking to different people that are on this uh, today. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for this. This has just been fantastic. And I'm sure a lot of people going out to SEMA are probably going to stop by and see you guys and uh, definitely want to learn more about it. So thank you so much, Troy. Thanks a lot. Th thank you very much, Troy. Also a special thank you to Randy Sarsnoff as in his team as Scott Lewis and Associates for coordinating everything and, and helping uh, you know put this webinar together with Troy. So this webinar has been recorded. It will be posted on the ePortrait platform, distributed through our newsletters and social media channel. Please don't forget to go to ePortrait to check uh, Gator's product. We push them back on the homepage uh, of the platform. Next week, webinars will be with Wegner Automotive for more updates and resources please go to ePortrait.com. Again, thank you very much and goodbye. ePortrait is a digital platform that we've created basically to make life easier in the business community of auto racing. 
e-part trade, there is no e-commerce. It's literally a connection just like at a trade show. So now, any time of the year, a buyer could reach out to a supplier. When you see a product that you're interested in, all you need to do is click on the request more information and then from there it is forwarded directly to the buyer or to the supplier. ePartrade really eliminates having to travel, closing down your shop. Now you have a place to showcase globally your racing product and technology. Land speed record holder George Poteet's Speed Demon rocketed 481 miles per hour at the Bonneville Salt Flats. You don't go that fast without ARP fasteners. There is no way that we could go the speed that we've gone, the number of times we've gone, with a lesser quality bolt than ARP supplies to us. And we absolutely wouldn't be where we were today if it weren't for ARP. When failure is not an option, it's ARP-Bolts.com. We're Performance Plus Global Logistics. Our team of dedicated performance industry and logistics experts get valuable cars and components to the track on time in top condition. We provide expedited logistics solutions for the performance industry using direct routes instead of deferred options and communicate all necessary information to the appropriate resources to meet regulations and ensure a smooth transit and secure delivery, both domestically and internationally. And we exceed customer expectations by providing best-in-class service with an efficient and cost-effective system in place. Contact us today to book your next shipment. You work as hard as your truck, and you have no time for downtime. That's why more truck owners trust Blue Def, America's number one diesel exhaust fluid brand. Each batch is guaranteed pure, so you can avoid costly repairs caused by inferior DEF. Demand America's best for your truck. Blue Def at Blue Def Platinum. Put trust in your truck. With ShopMonkey, we've been able to grow the shop by 20% in gross sales since implementing it in the shop. Everything that we were doing before has been sped up with ShopMonkey. All of our parts ordering, all of our approvals, all of our mechanics knowing what to do next. And I've had friends that are in the trade that own shops ask about ShopMonkey, and I highly recommend it just because of easy use. There's nothing like it with that kind of platform. With roots in the Midwest that date back well before the Model T, Fifth Third Bank has a long history of serving the needs of automotive companies. While much has changed over the years, our passion for helping businesses put cars on the road and on the track has not. Today, we are more committed than ever as a member of SEMA, a founding member of PRI, and a sponsor of multiple race teams across several racing series. For over a decade, Fifth Third Bank has been a staunch supporter of our industry and a great partner for many companies in the motorsports field. Our business has been growing extremely fast, and really, we could not be where we are today without Fifth Third. They provided amazing strategic advice, the capital we need to support our phases of growth. They are true partners for me now, and what they do with their involvement in motorsports is untouched in this community. Where can we take your business? Fifth Third Bank.